Welcome back to Curse, Code, and Crown, a live play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition podcast featuring a fully original world and campaign. I am the wizard Cronox, observer of time. Curse, Code, and Crown features our regular voiceover artists and improvisers, Laura Elizabeth as the accountant Eta, Tyler Hewitt as Maka Deathcap, and Ryan LaPlante as Duncan Kindano, alongside our dungeon master, the incredible Tom McGee. So get ready for an adventure including thrills, chills, and hope for a brighter tomorrow. It's time for Curse, Code, and Crown! Ita, Maka, and Duncan. Uh, well, actually, sorry, Duncan. Uh, I should say before I, I kind of narrate on to the next section here, uh, you'd remained behind for a moment. Was that just to collect yourself or did you have something else you wanted to do no, before I, you leave? No, I the actually said I was moving on. Like as soon as he said, like, you guys go ahead, Mark, I was like, okay. And oh, yes. I, sorry. I, I, I meant Duncan. Duncan is uh, Duncan, a, moment a, a moment. The moment he had alone, Duncan would raise his rapier. Uh, and then are the, are the walls are pure stone. Is there anywhere that's like dirty or anything? Uh, the collapse, there might be some sure, dirt. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think he would uh, hastily, in a very Zoro sense, uh, carve a quick, like, J with two blades coming out of it on a diagonal so that he's got a quick image of justice to pray to. Okay. Uh, and then he would take a knee uh, and he would just say, Lady Justice, I haven't prayed often. I pray with the blade more than I pray as a soul. I asked you for direction. And the direction for me and for justice and for the Dawnbreakers was clearly to move past the oaths to the princess. But I have not been released from those oaths. I need to return her. I need to find her a home. I know I've sworn this soul to you. But I have not sworn this body. And if the princess needs a place to rest and a place to live, and I can't find somewhere else, I'd rather her take my place and I move on than otherwise. Grant me this blessing if it's required. If you deny it, I don't know who I'll be. Uh, and then he'll stand up and just smudge out the symbol with a thumb and then go after the others. Cool. Uh, I'm going to give you one point of inspiration. Not because you know what you should do or what the will of Lady Justice is, but because one way or another, you are determined to sort it out. Um, so you meet up with Maka and Ida a little bit further down the way. And um, the three of you make your way kind of further down the tunnel. And uh, to your uh, great relief, um, it opens up into kind of a small staging area. Um, you can see there are some... Um, uh, some kind of um, there's like bits and bobs on them, but kind of old um, storage shelves, um, as well as a uh, small, seemingly old, somewhat underused uh, elevator. Um, beyond here, uh, it would seem to open up into two more tunnels um, that sort of split off and continue down into the depths. Um, if we were Gwendolyn, we would have stumbled up one of these, um, kind of uh, bumping after um, the things. Uh, one of them leads, uh, as she would know, uh, to the development workshop, um, but it's much further further down. Uh, but for the three of you, the sight of an elevator that seems to lead back up to the surface is of most use and interest. Uh, I assume you would head back up, knowing that none of the three of you are aware of what's down these seemingly similar tunnels. Yeah, I don't think we'd head down. I think looking at the elevator, though... Duncan would realize, like, Ita, we don't know who is a part of this conspiracy, and they expect you to be dead. Right now, that collapse means they don't know we killed any of the dwarfs. The demon knights will theoretically fall in combat or be trapped where they are. We might need to disguise you. Is there anything we can do to make her look not like herself? Uh, I would imagine I should look like a dwarf. Well, that'd be ideal. I, I mean, can you change your appearance? <laughs> Uh, no. Maka, is there anything you can do that'll make her look like not her? <laughs> I can wrap you in a cloak, we can give you some sunglasses, but I don't think that's going to turn you into not an orc. Uh, sorry, guys, one second. I just need to see yeah, man. if this 
can be bestowed on someone else or if it's just for me. We look over at Maka and it's just spores are randomly growing and shrinking. <laughs> it's like that, like a, a loading window if you were to see it on a computer. Yeah, there's like little <laughs> tips at the bottom uh, about like innocuous things. Like they'll help you, but not yeah. spoil anything. And then he's got two <laughs> mushrooms that are just growing white from the bottom to the yeah. top. Yeah, you're on the, there, he'll be able to tell us what he can do. I mean, they've been sold out since launch, but next generation Maka, those mushrooms don't even exist. It's just instant. It's really cool. <laughs> That's impressive. I knew I should get a PS5. Yeah. Ita, I can conceal you for a short while. You will not be able to speak with us or have much of any agency whatsoever but we will keep you close and we will keep you safe what can you turn her into do you i can turn her into a gas a vapor we can uh, collect her in a container and carry her with us for about one hour before she will emerge as an orc once uh, again to, to be quite honest i am still quite injured i i would not object uh, to, <laughs> as we would say, sitting this one out. Oh, uh, it, 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 this is very far beyond my area of expertise, and you seem to be much more equipped in uh, this type of, uh, I, I don't know, counter sedition, I suppose. So, Marka, how quickly can you turn her into a gas? Instantly, immediately. All right, let's hold off until we have to get her past someone where stealth may be a problem. I just wanted to make sure we have a plan before, like, so I, I can hit the elevator, you guys stand around the corner. When it shows up, if it's empty, we can get in. If it's hmm. not, gas her up, shove her in a jar or whatever. Just some, some uh, questions of practicality. Uh, say you were to die while I was uh, in gaseous form, uh, what would happen to me? Would I be trapped as a gas forever? Should we leave a breathing hole? Do uh, what, what, what? The enchantments afforded to me by Jossi would cease and you would revert to your original form. So you'd explode out of a jar? I would not be immediately crushed by the forces of the jar as I expand into it? I do not think so. <laughs> it's a question. If you stand on a jar, the jar breaks, right? If you put the jar on top of your head, do you break? Uh, yes, but neither of those uh, are equivalencies to what we are about to do. Well, here's the other question. Would you like to have a knife put all the way into your brain? Or would you like to find out what happens if Maka dies, if we can't talk our way past with a jar? If those are the only two options, then Correct. obviously. Uh, but if I do my... not believe those are the only two options. I believe that is uh, uh, false. If my concentration is broken, the spell will also end. Ah. Listen, I don't know what you both want from me. Do, I, here's, do you know what? I think we overthought this. Could you just turn her into a gas right now? Hmm. She must be willing. I, I hate you both <laughs> so mm. much. Yes, just so. Let's, yes. Okay, can, can we leave? Um, perhaps uh, the lid of the jar is not completely tight so that if I am expanding, the pressure may force off the lid and not potentially crush me uh, in my insides as I attempt to expand again. You're worried if a cork again. gets jammed on too hard, you'll die. I, I don't mean to yes. ruin this, this great train of thought. Um, do you have a jar, any of you? I have. I a have. Jar. I, have <laughs> I the breathing this, barrel this is of fine. Bertha. This is fine. We have we have a one hour time limit once again, but this is fine. <laughs> We've got the breathing barrel of Bertha that we can share. <laughs> Maka takes out from friggin' episode like two or something. Takes out the gift of Gus, <gasps> a dog gift collar that transforms you into a talking Yorkie for one hour. <laughs> Yay! The very mm. first familiar we met on the show, not that we necessarily knew that it would come up again later. Yeah. How will we explain uh, the presence of this uh, animal 
should I, do I talk? Should I talk? Do I no, don't do pretend that. to here's, be a dog? Here's the thing. Yorkies are very small. You can just go into, you know, Marcus. Well, <laughs> sure, yeah. No, no, no. We've got this box. Uh, and he points out the box with the letters in it that we got from the office. And he's like, we can just put you in the box if we need to walk you past someone. Otherwise, you're a Yorkie. I'll just start yelling about something and you can run away. They won't even see you. Uh, this is more acceptable, and perhaps if things to be seem to be going awry, then uh, th th the gas is a fallback. All right, so should we give her the caller to make the call? That makes sense in case we're separated. Are you okay with that, Maka? Yes. All right, then here you are. When you put this on, you turn into a dog. Um, shall I call the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> you do so. Um in classic uh, Metal Gear fashion, it like takes longer than you'd expect, but there's no one to fight, so you're, you're fine. Uh, eventually, it clangs down. Um, it looks old. Uh, it has some difficulty settling. Um, you can tell that it's, it's a disused device, and admittedly, with things like teleport pads and the uh, fast travel carts, it doesn't this does seem kind of antiquated. The good news is that likely means that it's not um, a major traffic zone. Uh, so the three of you clamber on, um, sort of close the the grate, and it's one of those ones that operates on a, a switch. So you just kind of crank it to the the top, um, and with a jolt, uh, the elevator begins its ascension. Um, after a moment, you disappear into rock, and you're pretty much moving through solid rock um, as you go up. Um, Maka, uh, you note with, uh, with a, I think a, a small. Uh, I, mean, I don't feel like you're a small grin person, but the total thoughtful equivalent of a grin, which might just be a hmm, um, you Probably. see uh, some old massive roots, uh, possibly belonging to uh, your old pals that you talked to up top. Um, and uh, slowly you're pulled um, up and up and up um, before uh, the elevator kind of <clears throat> clangs up into uh, a room that's just full of pig sacks uh they're not inflated um but there's just a bunch of them in here it reeks it is a fucking gross smelling room um but there's a couple pumps and uh you can tell that at one point uh this was uh like it, this this looks like a room that that would have been used as like a major transit junction for people to head down into the mines but clearly with better things it's become just a, a party storage room um there's like a bunch of vuvuzelas kicking around um just in case World Cup breaks out, uh, you know, um, there's red solo cups just as far as the eye can see. Of course, they're um, not made of plastic, but rather of, uh, of wood. Um, but, uh, yep, you find yourselves in a disused storage room. Uh, is there an exit visible from the elevator? Yes, absolutely. There's, okay. there's, I was um, like, if it's an unclosed room, I was like, uh-oh, we, we've taken a wrong turn. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, no. This, this uh, again, it, it seems like... Um, in the earliest days in the mine, this was likely where miners would like queue up to go Got down it. like a few at a time. Um, and you, uh, at this point, you can't really see the remnants of what that would have looked like. But yeah, instead, it's just like almost like a pool shed, just full of like okay. party tools. Outside, um, you can uh, hear that the klaxons have stopped uh, for the breach. Um, you can hear uh, the sounds of raucous partying. Uh, as well as uh, a, a large bell that's ringing um, very grandly, echoing throughout the uh, the caverns of Strongbrecht. Hmm. The bell. This is a new sound, yes? Yes, this is a new sound. Could it perhaps oh. mean they have elected a new president? It could be that. It could be that they have a, someone's been killing the demon knights downstairs. It could signal a coup. I don't know enough about this culture. Ita, you're the only one who knows anything about the dwarves. Do you know what that sound means? Uh, I do not believe I've heard that sound. It also has not come up in any of the manuals you've read. So I, I, you can I, I, be sure that it it's clearly something social. It's not something related to the business, which means it's likely not um a warning thing also i should say these are like cathedral bells ringing this isn't like ding 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 it's like boom, boom, boom. i i i do i i know that the uh dwarfs uh society more from an academic perspective but i i i do believe we heard 
uh, much different sounds when there was a, a demonite incursion. So this this may be more positive for who I do not know. A right, wedding, well, perhaps. Well, if we perhaps. go out, anything's possible. However, I did only pitch the wedding to the gentleman about 15 minutes ago. So I'm hoping it's not the wedding. Also, I'm the best man. I'd be a little bit offended. <laughs> uh, I think what we might need to do in this case, find out what's going on. Then we need to go back to our room so we can change uh, and then go try to talk to Richard the Grey. If we could do it in that order, let's go see what this bell is about. I just need to kill Karen. <laughs> um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, like, I'm making my way off the elevator into the storage room and trying to find uh, the next way out. Okay, yeah. So um, it opens up uh, into a back alley. Um it uh, it would have been a major street at one point, but now it's 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 been built up and around enough that it it isn't. Um, I'm and, I, I'm definitely hanging back a little bit, just sure. yep, totally so that fair. they take point, so I can yep. change um, the Yorkie. You step out, to. and sure enough, uh, there's a jovial party atmosphere. Um, uh, you can hear just kind of um, assorted chatter uh, from people being like, "Oh, wow, that 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 breach was <laughs> the." It's uh, too, too many. We really need a new president. Uh, you know, I, I'd vote Nagata out, but, you know, <laughs> anyway. Um, but um, as uh, as you you kind of uh, cautiously start to to sort of reconnoiter uh, out onto the street, um, a, uh, a dwarf uh, walks by and says, uh, oh, hey, uh, the, the heroes who slayed the, uh, the frost salamander. That's dope. Hey, uh, have you guys got one of these yet? Um, and he slaps a uh, a, a handbill um, uh, to your chest, uh, which uh, announces that um, the uh, election and the wedding will be held uh, tomorrow. And the bells are announcing the uh, more so the election than the wedding because he's just some guy. Um, but it's kind of a like almost um, in the same way that like all the news sites have to be like. Tomorrow's the official end of campaigning. No more speeches, everyone. Uh, you get the sense that this bell is kind of announcing the end of end of the campaign. Um, and uh, the uh, the dwarf kind of leans in and he says, uh, and remember, well, I mean, I guess you guys can't vote. So, you know what, fucking, I don't need to tell you shit, but uh, Jaden's the guy. Um, and he, he skips off merrily slapping handbills on anyone who doesn't have one. Damn it. All right. We need to go change. We need to talk to Richard de Grey right now. And then we got to start worrying about this. Ele- Maybe he'll know more about the the, the, the Grey or what the, the, you're worried about, Mark, and so we can help with the cycle. Yes. And then I'll kill Karen eventually. All right, let's 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 go do this. Um, Eater, will you join us or will you leave this place? Uh, you are free. You are out of the mines. Yes. Your That's true. Work fighting here, for the, fighting for the princess or the cycle's not your fight, my friend. Your work here was under false pretenses. This is true. H- however, since I am supposed to be dead, um, I, I'm not sure that I have a place to return to until this is resolved. Uh, therefore, I would like to uh, understand the consequences more before I decide to uh, set off onto a an unknown uh, world now. It mm-hmm. is a little bit uh, disturbing. This so. is a tremendous moment. I've never met anyone else who's already dead too. And he just like takes her under his arm and he's like, let me tell you the great things about being dead. Uh, he just goes back to their room. Amazing. All right. Yeah. So as, um, as they walk, Mark is like, three steps behind like before he starts to walk he just like says to no one like i also died <laughs> just like <laughs> <flips once. laughs> oh oh um the uh you kind of um feel a ripple um and uh the digits on your um wooden arm um kind of um curl briefly not into a fist but just kind of like roll through mm-hmm. um and um you almost think you can hear kind of an echo through the spores that sounds something to the effect of, haven't we all? 
<laughs> just everyone you have has died. Yeah. <laughs> Gwendolyn also died um, twice. Uh, great. <laughs> um, so you make your way back to, to your rooms. Um, you can find, uh, you, you see that no one has, has been here uh, since uh, you last left. Um, Sandra likely sent someone to like, you know, I was going to say refresh the linens, but you're just on stone shaped beds so there isn't really anything too clean per se um but um you uh do find a note um that has been delivered uh from uh Jeanette Wilcox uh that says um I have an update for you uh please see me when you can all right need to see Jeanette we need to see Richard the Grey Richard the Grey uh, first or second first or second uh, we've got these two problems Marka normally I have some sort of ruler to make these decisions I'm not used to doing this on my own Jeanette helps with the princess princess is important but Karen is also important but Richard the Grey may help us knock over this whole conspiracy if we can't get to Karen in advance which one do we go to first you're a leader of your people. <laughs> Duncan is as awkward as I am right now. Like, he's just hands <laughs> pressed against his head. He doesn't know what to do. I am no leader, but a note from Jeanette. Jeanette? Janelle? Yep. Jeanette? Jeanette? Jeanette. A note from Jeanette promises something already. We do not know anything about Richard the Grey. We will start with Jeanette where there is more promise, hmm? more knowledge, and then we will find Richard. That makes a great deal of sense. Now for a somewhat more awkward conversation. Ita, we can turn you into a dog for an hour, but we've clearly got more than an hour left ahead of us. We're not that different in height and build. I think we need to trade clothes, and you need to be Duncan Kindano, and I need to be Ita the Orcountant. But then you will be a target, no? Yeah, but that's sort of where I want to be. Because if there's going to be a conspirator coming at us with a knife in the dark, I live in the dark. I'm going to stab it into his face after he tells me all his stories. It'll keep you safe. and It'll let us know if someone comes at us. It'll also let me keep you alive. I don't have a princess. You're not this, a bad person. This also suggests that I have responsibilities... Uh, uh, to this is quite confusing how so you're dressed as me and i'm dressed as you yes but i will have to say things that uh, uh that i would not say you you don't uh, no one here actually knows me other than the president who turned into stone and jeanette wilcox who we're going to meet a That's french it. musketeer i don't know if i buy this plan ryan <laughs> i will i will need to sound like you know but what what happens that if someone brings up a conversation that I have not been privy to between this is you what and them? Okay, and let's then... pump the brakes. Pump the brakes for a second. Again, you're overthinking this. I have talked to exactly three people. There's Sandra, who will recognize me as me anyway, so we don't have to pretend in front of Sandra. There's Jeanette Wilcox. There's the president who turned into stone. And there's Kevin Fast Travel. If any and... of them were part of the conspiracy... We're Jaden Hayworth. Oh, but he, uh, Jaden Hayworth actually thinks I'm not Duncan Kendano. Didn't tell him the name. He thinks I work for Ginkgo Greenleaf. Mm, that's separate. That's I have to wear a me. I have to wear a mask and a costume when I go Greenleaf. to the wedding. <laughs> there are many layers to this. That's a different part. Everyone, see, here's okay. You're both going to be Dawnbreakers now for a second, and I'll be the first captain. You dress up as me, I dress up as you. You say you're Duncan, that's fine. That's all anyone needs to know. You can have the feelings you want to feel. I'm not going to carry this as a legacy. It's fine. Maka, Ooh, actually, you've been doing great this whole as. time. I don't really have instructions for you. <laughs> uh, yes, good. Hmm. All right, so with that, uh, and with some confusion still in your heart, but a, a <laughs> sincere hope uh, that the brim of the hat is wide enough to mostly hide behind... Um, Oh, and Maka, Maka, you've made makeup for the trees before. Uh, using the spores that you can grow, is there any way that you could perhaps paint me up to be the skin color of our orcish friend and have her appear to be my skin color for people who've seen us from a distance? This would 
take time. What I might recommend is it's worth remembering that <laughs> everyone in Sprong Breck is heavily drinking uh, most of the time. So uh, if you just kind of, as, as long as you aren't in direct conversations with a lot of people, no one will likely notice. You've also noticed since you killed the salamander, people are kind of giving you distance. So I don't know that you necessarily need to fully disguise yourselves. That would be my my recommendation, uh, given the tight time frame you have, uh, given that uh, the election and wedding are are rapidly approaching. Well, you know, it sort of goes to the exact opposite of one of the classic Dawnbreaker teachings. But you know what? It's sort of an oppositional world. So let's say here, the keys to success will be underestimating the enemy. Let's go. <laughs> Great. Um, so Ida wearing um, remarkably different clothes with like a, a cape, which just seems very uh, illogical. Uh, it's a lot of extra fabric. Um, we will keep the weapons we are most proficient yes, with. We will I, do that. I, so. I figured. Um, Duncan, uh, you um, strap on um, Ida's gear, including her uh, her abacus, which is like a weird pain in the ass for you because it's just like a thing hanging around your neck that isn't functional for anything you like to do. Uh, it's like stitched into the fabric, but it is literally just like an abacus that's always there, kind of like a weird Darth Vader um, plate. It's so good news is you can count shit real good now, but also it's going to get in the way of stuff. Um, so like, you know, there's a quick montage of like Ida, like putting on like the Dawnbreaker gauntlets and like that Duncan quickly putting on like Ida's traveling gear, um, like fiddling with the abacus angrily, um, Maka standing stock still, um, enjoying a, a quick rest. Uh, and with that, uh, you are off, uh, to see Jeanette, um, so you make your way um, following kind of the, the pathways that you're familiar with, uh, the lakes and the rivers that you're used to, if you will, um, back down uh, to um, uh, Jeanette's uh, office um, in the uh, little, again, like kind of down one of those um, circular, oh, I guess you're, uh, sorry, you'd have to go back to where the, the stone shaped stairs uh, were but they recognize you and they're they're quite happy to do that for you um you're a little trepidatious but you're happy to discover that um no one is is giving any of you an eye other than just like oh these are people we know there's no like comment on like weren't you uh, maybe both of you mm. it's just they're very workmanlike and again um a dwarf shaper quickly builds out um a, a stairwell for you um swirling it into the ground um and you make your way uh, down uh, to the the office. Uh, Jeanette isn't there to meet you this time. You have to like actually wander through the tunnels a little bit uh, to get there. Um, however, uh, when you enter um, her workshop, uh, you discover that she's been stabbed. Um, she is uh, there's a, a sort of a a line of blood along the floor um, and you, you see Jeanette slumped um, by one of the tables, uh, clearly dead. Can I examine the body for cause of death? Uh, like obviously stabbed, but like, mm. did she foot put up a struggle? Um, is this where she died? Um, yep. uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation, please. Duncan will stand by the, like, step into the door frame to make sure that, like, no one's going to walk in and be like, you killed her. <laughs> but understood. Yep. He also wants time for them to look over this scene without having to hand it off to the authorities. Yep, I understand. It's, uh, it's just a four, unfortunately. A four. Um, enough to tell that um, she crawled uh, from the middle of the room. Um, she was uh, stabbed in the chest. Doesn't seem to have put up a fight. Um, you rolled badly, but these things are fairly evident from the fact of, of yeah, kind of where, okay. where she's at. Stabbed in the front, no sign of a fight. Yep. So Maka will turn her over and say, um, it would appear Jeanette knew her attacker and was not expecting to be killed by them. Does the, is the dagger, um, there's no way to run. Sorry. What's that? Sorry. There's no, the, the murder weapon is not present. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said, I, been, I, so been I immediately stabbed, imagine I stabbed, found her stabbed. It's sticking out of her, but I got you. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it, uh, blade went in, blade came out. Okay. 
Mark a checker pocket. Eat it. You know the best of any of the paperwork of any of us. See if there's anything in the notes, if there's anything around that seems like it could have been related to what she was working on when she was killed. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I'll search the body. Um, the a, a quick search of the body, uh, Tyler reveals that um, just got kind of the, the standard things you'd expect to find on a, a, a career worker. Uh, she's also got a joint because she's still sprung back, baby. Um, mm. But uh, from what you would assume, uh, it feels like she's likely been searched before. Um, mm. uh, meanwhile, uh, Ita, what uh, what skill set would you use? Uh, again, we don't have a bureaucracy role, but that's basically what I'm yeah. looking for. Arcana, um, I guess, it, maybe? It's, um, I think this is more investigation. Sure. Um, 24. Whew. Um, so uh, you start looking at all of the... Uh, I think you, you do kind of um, in the same way that Maka is examining the body you treat all of the paperwork that is visible almost like your crime scene. Um, and sure enough, um, the uh, after kind of looking over some stuff that seems to have not been uh, touched in a while, um, there is a, a ledger um, that seems to have, a, for lack of a better term, an open ticket um, in it. Uh, and in observing this, uh, like it, it's normally like re requests for... Um, bonding assistance or um uh you can see that she's got a few requests for like rebonding uh which seems strange but like hmm. um from just a, a quick glance it would seem that some people have uh, uh sort of almost um spiritual dissonance with their armor it doesn't quite the bonding doesn't quite take Interesting. um but uh most recently um there is uh, a ticket um entitled uh standard cleaning uh which strikes you as odd because nothing you know of Jeanette would imply that she cleans armor she's responsible for helping people bond to it mm -hmm. um but uh using kind of with that role and using your your kind of read between the lines bureaucracy um you can see that this is a clue that's been left by Jeanette um, and it's not complete, but, um, based on what you spoke to, you were, were you with Maka and Duncan before? No. Okay. No. So, uh, it seems to detail, um, the, uh, cleaning requirements for a suit of armor, um, with a, a note that says, uh, inexplicably spotless. Hmm. Um, no particle traces whatsoever either recent or ancient. I think from, obviously she's going to present this to mm -hmm. uh, Mock and Duncan, but. Um, and we would give you all of the relevant yeah, information yeah. so that you're caught up on but everything. This, I, I wonder if this is perhaps, perhaps, perhaps Gwendolyn's armor that is being referred to here. That would be my assumption. It'd be the only suit out of the ordinary she'd be dealing with. If Jaden had come here, he didn't have a suit. So there's no no particles, which means no sign of the princess, but also no sign of the soul of Frecklin the Tall or anyone, as though it had been purged completely. That's not supposed to be possible. stands to benefit from that being kept a secret. Karen. Jeanette was a leading mind in the field that brought great industry and business to Sprongbreck. It does not make sense, given the political plot we are aware of, to kill her. Unless, there was money to be made. Hmm? Unless she'd engaged with Karen's armor and discovered something about the old armor that isn't true about the current armor. Perhaps the demons? Perhaps they weren't always graying. What if the gray oh. is involved? What if there's mm -hmm. something that's keeping their society in the same 30 year cycle? That's something they would figure out if they had had a longer historical memory. Hmm. <sighs> 
keep the notes. Then perhaps Probably it is to... time to speak to the uncharacteristically long living Richard the Grey. Yes. But what do we do about the body in here? If we report it, we'll be stuck answering questions until the election's over. If we leave it here for someone to stumble upon, they'll think we did it. Tom, are there any forges or anything around, like fires where we could ditch a body? Uh, not in this room, unfortunately, since this is kind of her office. It's, uh, it's pretty sterile. Um, that said, uh, you could conceivably just leave the body. Also, Maka, you might have spore-based abilities that could break a body down right quick. They may not be on your sheet, but I was going to say nothing on paper. But... What you would you would think? I mean, I guess if you were properly guiding the cycle, you likely would just be like, "I got to put the body in the ground so the body, the, the, the earth can do its thing." Not like I'll melt this for you. Yeah. Um. Um. Ryan, can you roll me an investigation check, please? It's a nat 20. Nat 20. Um, nice. Okay, so there's no uh, there's no forge nearby. Uh, that said, there are definitely enough like um, like wardrobes and uh, cabinets and that sort of thing um, where you could definitely stow a body temporarily. It will be found eventually, but in classic video game, you knocked out a guard fashion. Um, you could you could definitely stow her for now. You just need to clean up the blood. All right, Maka, put the body in a closet. Ita, if you can clean up the blood and the rags that you use, put with the body again. I'll watch from the doorway and then we'll get out of here. Hmm. Did anyone know that you, Duncan, were going to meet Jeanette Wilcox? Well, the security guards upstairs that we had to go by sent us down here. Then there's a dead body. Hmm. I, I wonder if they would know uh, if anyone else has been in this room before us. Logically, mm -hmm. they should be able to tell us that, yes. Um, Ita, can you please roll me a history check? Sure. Uh, 19. Um, the handwriting on the note you received is the same as the handwriting in the ledger. It seems that the note was genuine. The note that you received that led you back down here. Um, wait, sorry. What sorry, was the, the, sorry. The, the note, uh, Jeanette's note saying I have updates for you is written in the same script as all of the rest of the documents in here. Just in case uh, I could kind of tell the conversation was leading towards like, well, could someone else have sent us down here? The note that ah. was left in your room was genuine. Gotcha. Sorry, not um, like the, the betrayal letter. This is Yeah, just, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> Hey, come by my workshop. I got some stuff to tell you. Uh, I believe un unless uh, someone else has been writing in Jeanette's uh, ledgers as well, then this note was from her. Wait, I believe that her request was genuine. Great. I was, I was just saying, like, put the body in a closet so we don't get blamed for the murder and clean up the room. That's all I had. Oh, I can do Is that. Is I'm going to present evidence that I find. I do not foolish? understand why you are confounded by this. Is it foolish to report the dead body to the guards? We are innocent. Hmm? We just, we merely found the corpse. I'm starting to understand why the princess just stamped her feet and yelled things a lot. We could tell them they could make us stay for questioning, and we have less than 24 hours to solve this, defeat Karen, prevent the election, and theoretically have a chance at breaking the grey. Do you think us being around to answer questions about a murder is more important than that? Mm. Perhaps we can hide the body and then uh, casually uh, pass the guards again and say, I feel so foolish, uh, but uh, Miss uh, Jeanette um, told us ab about the conversation she had with someone and it was the previous person that was in the room, but, and she said the name, but I forgot and I feel so foolish Duncan about going back to ask Duncan is stuffing the body in the <laughs> Yeah, in I just do it myself. Yeah. I just do it myself. I'm, I'm done talking to them. He fucking shoves the body in a closet while they still debate semantics. He wipes out the blood and throws it in. And then he just walks past them out the door. 
I still think we need to gather more information. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> he, he closes the door behind him. He closes it and leaves you in there with the door closed and keeps walking. Uh, Maka, you and Ita are alone for a moment. What do you say? Perhaps if we leave a note explaining the situation, we will not be detained for questions. Hmm. And then he, he leaves. <laughs> he walks out and leaves. Uh, Ita, do you leave a note? I did not believe that his logic was sound, no. Great. Uh, so then you follow the turtle, uh, and collectively you manage to hide the body. <laughs> we all pitched in. Yeah, it was great. It was a good team effort. Um, so uh, you make your way back up to the surface. Um, passing the guards, uh, do you say anything, or do you just kind of nod to them? Maka, I think, would want to ask... Um, has Jeanette Wilcox taken any other visitors today? Oh, yeah, sorry, bro. Uh, we just came on shift not that long ago. Hmm. Thank you. All right, well, we're asking because she wasn't in there when we got there. I don't I don't know about that, but... Oh, yeah, I mean, look, she, she's a busy lady. We got lots of new new recruits bonding. Uh, you go check the, uh, the soul bonding room. Sometimes she talks to people in there. You know, got to keep the chanting going and everything. Uh, but also with the breach... Um, you know, uh, we, we had, uh, we had reports that they, they actually had to blow one of the shafts, which is something we haven't had to do in a long time. So she might be helping out down there. Uh, he leans in, he's like, you know, uh, between you and me, the, uh, and he's not a demon knight. He's just like a guard. He's like, uh, you know, the demon knights, like if you, if you get fucked up while wearing that armor, like it can do bad things because your soul's like infused in it. Right. So sometimes she has to kind of help souls move on from, uh, from the armor. So if anyone got hurt, she might be doing that. So, uh, sorry, my dudes. Uh, it's cool. Just come back later. There's no rush, right? I mean, you're not part of the election. Honestly, everything will be more chill tomorrow. We're going to have a hell of a party. It's going to be tight. Uh, but then you can just, uh, come talk to her then. All right. Thank you, friend. Have yourself a good one. I'm an accountant. Uh, <laughs> he just turns around and walks away. Yo, that guy's a joker. <laughs> I like how the 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 accountant ladies dressed like a weirdo with a hat, um, and then the three of you head up the stairs. Um, so, um, with very few hours remaining in the day, and all of you being completely exhausted, uh, you head to see uh, finally to see Richard the Gray. Um, it is the last possible day of campaigning, um, but. Um, you can tell that uh, currently um, the tides seem to have swung um, pretty hard uh, in favor of, of Jaden. Um, so uh, after asking around a little bit, um, you find uh, Richard the Grey giving um, a town hall to about six dwarves, uh, most of whom seem to be playing a drinking game um, as a... Uh, as he he does his thing, um, as uh, as you kind of saw from the the sort of shitty satire pantomime thing earlier, um, he's odd in that he's he's got patches of gray. Um, it's not the same as uh, say uh, President Nagata, where it was very clear where the the gray was spreading. For him, it's it's like parts. You know, he's got like a couple fingers that have grayed. He's got a patch on his face. Um, and uh, he is uh, in uh, the middle of, of uh, answering a question. Um, and uh, he just says, well, uh, I, uh, I understand that uh, all of us have a lot of opinions about uh, uh, traditions and uh, things we'd like to see kept. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, they don't need to stay that way. There are other ways. I've traveled the world. I've seen it all. Well, not all, but some. And we can live a better life than we're leaving right now. And you see, as soon as he says better life, and like it's like people drink on better life, tradition, seen it all. And it's and you can tell the audience is pretty trashed. Like they've been at this for a while. Uh and someone's like, uh, yeah, Mr. The Gray, um <laughs> uh do you mean to tell me that you've traveled outside of Fortress Sprongbreck? Um, and, uh, unfortunately, uh, and Duncan, for you particularly, this is bad news. You can tell he's one of those people that's easy to trap in the same story that he's just told because he just 
likes telling says, ah, a good question, yes. I was once part of a trade caravan and saw the world. And again, they're all like snickering and, and drinking. Uh, and he goes on to talk about his, his time uh, as a young dwarf um, with the trade caravans and uh, traveling um, to uh, like various places that none of you have heard of. Um, again, like we're mostly dealing in big kingdoms, but there, there are towns and, and villages and hamlets throughout. Uh, and he seems to have done a bunch of tours to those uh, before returning. I just said, uh, when I left, I thought this would be the great work of my life. See a few things and then gray. Well, you, you live once, only most of us do, I used to say. Um, and they're like, they're snickering. They're like, he doesn't even know what YOLO is. Um, he says, but I, I, I realized I was wrong. There are old people around. You can live longer than this. We don't need to, to simply live in a never-ending state of party. We can move beyond it, become smarter, better. Hmm? And there's like, he's, he pauses for applause and there's none. Um, and he's... Uh, a dwarf with a clipboard comes in and says, uh, yes, we've got uh, one more time for one more question. Um, as newcomers, uh, she kind of looks up to uh, the three of you with a cocked eyebrow. <laughs> and I imagine we all just like take a beat being like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as we all just did. <laughs> think of the best question. Yeah. Um, you don't have to ask one. It's just if you, if you have, no, we want to yell out in this town hall, we will. I think Duncan would look to the others to see if they have a question first, probably starting with Maka. Um, Maka, uh, would ask, um, would you, care to tell us about your experience graying and how it is different from the norm um he uh he considers the three of you for a moment but there's that uh for lack of better term it's like a smug smirk of uh that i only really see when someone's like Oh, I have information about the thing you're talking about, and I'm just waiting my turn to talk about the smarter thing. I can, like the, the better version of it. I can tell. Um, happens with uh, I found like I had a couple of professors in university who were really good at this. Um, where it's just like I'm just going to wait for you to finish so I can just tell you a different thing that's related. And um, he says, "A fine question from a turtle of Blaine, a place that I uh, sadly didn't visit, but no is out there." Um, and um, he kind of holds up um, his, his hands uh, <clears throat> and says, uh, these were once strong hands, but now look at them, gray, and slowly the rest of me is going to think of all the great minds, all the great experience, President Nagata, everything she could have taught us, but instead she's a statue. Now think. What if we could harness all that thought power, all of that experience? I don't believe we need to just give up on it. And I, for one, will not. Um, and uh, he goes on to explain some of the physical sensations and they're what you'd expect, uh, having various parts of your body turned to stone, not ideal. Um, but he can say, like, every day I can feel it slowly sapping away the rest of me until I'll be nothing more than one of these goddamn statues, and I refuse to go quietly into that night. So, in, so I was just saying, like, in his, as he's telling these stories, in his attempt to, you know, um, uh, appeal to, to folks, um, does he talk about how long he's lived in uh, Sprong Wreck, how old he is? Anything like that? Um, yeah, uh, I think he's probably about 34, which is well past. Uh, most people gray out at like 29 or 30. Okay. Um, that said, he he is an old looking 34. Like, and it's in part because also like part of his hair has, has grayed. So it's stone. Part of his beard is stone. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, you get the sense that a lot of that context was likely earlier in his pontificating. In this case, he's trying to deliver like a powerful concluding statement. Um, and uh, at, uh, at the end, he's, he just says, uh, uh, my fellow sprongbreckers, you have a valuable choice tomorrow. And you're going to hear a lot of guff 
from a lot of people like Jaden Hayworth. He's going to say, I am a crook. Well, I am not a crook. I am the best damn chance we have of surviving this thing. So a vote for me is a vote for Sprung Brick. Now go forth and vote eventually. And then he um, stands there awkwardly, hoping everyone will stand and cheer, and no one does. And there's just a full beat of pure silence and quiet snickering. And then he goes, well, um, all right, right then. Uh, Okay, goodbye. And then he trips and falls off the stage. (laughs) All right, well, we'll let the crowd clear out and then go try to talk to him personally. Yeah, there's a lot of awkward, like, roadie bottles that they're knocking over. And, like, it's it's people who smuggled, like, drinks into a movie theater who are, like, trying to leave quietly, but knocking, like, it's just the one bottle rolling down the uh the thing and um you see um richard's uh campaign manager um come over uh and uh they're just like uh he goes i think that went pretty good they said um this campaign has been the worst experience of my life i hope you win i know you won't (laughs) May God have mercy on our souls. And then they just slap the the clipboard uh, to his chest and walk out. And he says, ah, oh, well, always good to have a team behind you. Jesus All Christ. right, Dick, let's, uh, let's keep it together until we're home. <coughs> then he turns to leave. Excuse me, United States. Do you have time for a quick conversation that I think could pivot this entire election? Somewhere private. I know the one place no one will be tonight. Come on, we'll go talk at my campaign headquarters. Um, And uh, he leads you um, down the street to um, another uh, building that seems like it was part of the old mine entrance. And um, says, you know, a lot of people say these buildings are no good because they're old, but I was making a statement. It's a perfectly fine building. Just ignore the rats, and uh, you kind of got to jiggle the handle to get in. Hang on. And he, like, awkwardly jiggles the handle and tries to unlock it and eventually manages um, and leads you in. And it looks like they're um, – it's it's a sad campaign office, but it is a very functional one. Like, it's, it's folding tables. Um, you note, unlike a lot of the stuff you've seen, there's not a lot of stone-shaped uh, furniture in here which kind of speaks to A, how old this place is, and B, his lack of campaign support. Um, But uh, incidentally, it does look more comfortable than a lot of the shit you've been sitting on the last few days. Um, It does look like there are handbills, there are plans, there's like, it it clearly was a very thriving campaign office, but uh, with the results seemingly in the bag, uh, it looks like it has uh, tapered off quite a bit. Um, So he welcomes you in and um, says... uh, well, uh, how can I help you, uh, topsiders? Marco, why don't you sort out what you need to know about the grey, and then we'll get into the politics. Mr. The Grey, I have reason to believe that the fate of the people of Sprongbreck is an unnatural one. Graying is not is not death proper for a dwarf. Hmm. No. I believe there is something causing this affliction to your people here within Sprungbreck. And I do not know what it is. But you, you are the only one who seems to speak of doing things differently. One who speaks of finding a cure or treatment for the Grey. Hmm? Yes. You you may know things that others have not been able to tell us yet. He uh he nods, um and uh he um you know uh like pours himself a drink from admittedly the classiest decanter you've seen since you got down here. Um <laughs> It still looks like it's Jagermeister, but it's at least in like a, a crystal topped thing. Um, you do note there's a lot more top world 
stuff in here. Um, he right. seems to have that brought back sense. with him. Yep. Um, so he pours himself a drink and uh, kind of like sits down, like undoes the, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's we're still in, in sprung brick. So like he, he was three buttons undone. He undoes a fourth button to relax and like breathes easier. Like he's taken off his tie. <laughs> hmm. um, and um, he uh, unpops his collars uh, and uh, says, sorry, just getting a little more comfortable. <clears throat> Friend Portal, you're uh, absolutely correct. What I saw up there was different than down here. Hang on, I'm going to take a sip of my drink. It's hard talking with the gray in your throat. <laughs> um, he goes on to explain how when he left, uh, as he kind of mentioned in, in the, um, the speech, he kind of thought that was it for him. He was going to go see the world, come back, live the rest of his life down here. Um, and uh, he confesses uh, after a few more sips of his drink that he actually kind of thought he would gray out up top, but not unlike uh, our beloved mermaid pal, Ariel, um, he, he wanted, wanted to be where the people are. Yeah. He wanted to be part of that world. Um, and he kind of thought it would be um, a nice, a nice way to die. It'd be a nice place to die. It would be off on a big grand adventure, a little bit like the, the, the Bilbo Baggins thing. Just like if I got to go, I kind of want to do it. <laughs> well, acting the movie bucket list. Um, <laughs> but he found that he didn't gray while he was up top um, at all. Uh, he turned 30 and had shown absolutely no signs of graying, uh, which began to eat away at him. Uh, it haunted him. Uh, the fact that it was similar to actually, Maka, your experience of it and how you just described it to him. Uh, just the fact that it's so much given in Sprongbrek whereas the rest of the world it seems insane like it's just one of those cultural traditions that for some reason has never been examined um so with that in mind he returned home to try and uh fix it uh to try and, and cure it to try and figure out how to move society past he's been met with great resistance um most people don't have time uh again we're talking like born kind of grow up a little bit, apprenticeship, job, teach the next generation, dead. It's a real short cycle. So uh, most people were too busy YOLOing. They didn't really want uh, to pay much attention. And the only way he, he could think to do it was to um, take advantage of this election and run on a platform of legitimate change, um, shirking tradition and pulling together as a society uh, to cure the gray. <clears throat> and this is where he kind of leans in and says, uh, I still don't know what causes it, but all I know is since I've been back, it's been happening and it's not stopping. I'm convinced there's something in the president's papers. If I could just become president, I know I could solve it and stop it. The president's papers. What are these papers? Um, he explains that there is, um, and this would track with what Ita has encountered as well, um, there's a strong oral tradition here, but there's also um, a decently strong, <clears throat> if not longevity record. There's a lot of like, hi, I'm handing, it's almost like um, like a vacation handoff package. It's just like, hey, you're doing this now? Great. Here's everything you need to know right now. Uh, and then you write the same thing for your, your followers. So he's convinced that uh, between, even though these records often don't go back multiple generations, even a couple generations, um, he's convinced that the president has more access to information, um, the information he needs to solve it. And unfortunately for someone like Nagata, if you're not, his experience topside and what he's kind of been sussing out is enough to piece it together if he has all the information at hand. For most other people, but it would just be like, yeah, yeah. Just Nagata what didn't have the frame of reference to... Uh, it's yeah. The, the best example I can think of is, although I mean, we're kind of running the cycle again right now. But um, the way that uh, I think it was the Victorians, for instance, thought that bathing was bad, that it would spread germs because their understanding of virology was so limited that they had to kind of just guess at stuff. But the second someone who understood virology looked at it, they're like, oh, no, this is good. This actually gets the things that make you sick off of you. This isn't the thing that makes you sick. So it's that kind of idea where he's he's pieced together enough that he's like, if I just have all the information, I'm pretty sure I can put it together because I've done the extra work. And I also, he legitimately believes it doesn't need to be this way, which is different from the entire society. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll just yeah. end uh, really quickly then before handing it off to Ita and, and Duncan as, as just asking um. Do you know 
if Weebly, Strobel, Maya, the trade minister, does he support Jaden Hayworth? Um, And uh, Richard, um, hmm. I don't know if Richard would know this. Richard's kind of bad at politics. Um, Let the dice decide. Um, Yeah, he says, uh, you know, it's it's funny. I uh, I thought maybe he'd get on board because more. I'm a trader myself. I've been with caravans. (coughs) Again, gray throat. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Uh, yeah, this uh, was a ballsy choice, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I knew what I was getting into when I decided in the spur of the moment to do it. Um, <laughs> the only choice that made sense. Uh, it says, uh, but uh, everybody likes the young buck. Jaden Hayworth is exactly what you want from a president. He's young. He's handsome. He comes from a political family. Him and all the other Hayworths, they're a dynasty, a new Camelot, if you will. But... Um, Weirdly, I wanted to open up more trade. And he still just wanted to support Jaden. Mm. So yes, not me, but the young, handsome guy. Maka turns to Duncan and says, uh, Jaden may know more than he lets on, or he is a pawn in a greater scheme. Mm. Yes, my guess would be that he's more malleable than you would think, but... Um, Ryan, can you roll an insight check, please? Ooh, and 22. Actually, um, okay, well, then I'll, I'll give to you, Maka. I would say you'd be pondering this as well. <coughs> it occurs to both of you, um, or at least Duncan, based on Maka's description, uh, that uh, Weebly didn't seem to have any idea that there was a, a, a scheme afoot until he read that letter. So oh, it right. could reach to the top, but it could also be a more limited conspiracy than like, it might almost be a mid government conspiracy, not a top of house. It could still be top of house, but the fact that he was completely unaware and kind of taken aback um, based on your understanding of court intrigue, a conspirator wouldn't be surprised that they were in the conspiracy. Also, again, based on your understanding of like the longevity of most Orvelian politicians, the the turnover rate is so insane. It's really fucking hard to run a conspiracy if people have a job for like 10 years and half of that time is spent training their replacement. All right. So either way, right now, it seems that everyone who prefers, everyone who is involved is voting or supporting Jaden Hayworth. And one of the first rules of warfare is, if the enemy wants something, deny it. So, Mr. The Grey, we have certain political weapons that could work in your favor. Do you have anyone who can actually help you who still thinks you have a chance? Oh, yes. There are several people who have lost great mentors or family members or lovers to the gray who would be happy to see a cure if there is one. They just don't believe I can win because of that handsome, smooth-talking son of a bitch. Have you seen his impression of me? Ridiculous. Completely. We're going to let that one go. Um, Okay, so... I have a couple of things that you could work in your favor. A, he's not as well supported as you think, especially not amongst uh, children of the 80s. They prefer TikTok and dancing to the clock. He doesn't understand that medium. So there's that. Uh, Also, he's getting married tomorrow and I'm supposed to help organize the wedding. So I need to chase down a uniform and a mask. But I can guarantee you, he is going to alienate a lot of people with how that wedding goes. It's going to be a disaster. Lastly... And perhaps this one might be the easiest to spread around. I found out that he is a virgin because he's scared he'd be so bad at sex that he needs to trap a woman before he's willing to have sex with them. Again, that is very disappointing to hear from anyone. Yes, it's not a problem that he's a virgin. That'd be fine. No, that part's fine. I 
Just can't people... believe he's trying to trap someone in order to pop his cherry. Yes, that's incredibly uh, detestable and uh, full of toxic masculinity. So I think you might be able to spread a rumor that might trick him into announcing things. Either you can spread that rumor and then he has to deny it, which is pretty great. Or you could spread a rumor uh, using your volunteers and everything else that he's so bad at sex that every person he's ever had sex with gave up on sex and just immediately grade. And then logically, the only defense he has is to say that he's never had sex. And when they say why, he'll reveal the terrible thing about trapping women, perhaps at his own wedding, which I feel like might hurt him significantly right before the vote. I like this a lot. You know, I have a friend who's very good at spreading rumors. Um, it's funny, there was another candidate once who lost everything. His name was Watergate. So this will be like a Watergate scandal. We'll just take him out. I'm calling my pal Depthrot immediately, and he can spread it all over the place. Wonderful. All right, so you do that. Jesus Christ. Try to focus on winning over the TikTokers. Uh, and I need to I'll ask send you, you to a song they barely remember with context they don't have, but somehow it'll be popular <laughs> as hell. All right. Um, do you know a place where I could get a mask and an outfit and a You've hat? You've come to the right man. And he goes and gets a chest uh, and he pulls it out. And sure enough, like you've seen trinkets all over the place. Um, so uh, he opens it up and um, he uh, brings you um, uh, a mask that is um, quite striking. Um, it's, uh, think uh, like a cross between... Um, uh, sort of like Sauron's style of like the very sharp angles uh, in a plague doctor mask. Um, so kind of hooked beak, um, small kind of red lenses, but with some of that he like <clears throat> heavy metal um, accoutrements. Um, and he says, this is a replica of Asher's war helm, the necrotus himself. I bought it at a market thinking it would fit my face, but since my beard started graying, I can't fit it on anymore. And it was mostly just for me to look in the mirror, and I don't do that much anymore. So it's my gift to you. If you can help me take that son of a bitch down a peg, it's all yours. Thank you, friend. Nothing I a will. Dawnbreaker likes more than wearing the helm of the Necrotus. Yeah, that's that's haunting. He'll find an outfit somewhere else. <laughs> All right. Here's the last question. Uh, no, actually, one for you. Uh, he'll grab both his <laughs> grab Maka and 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 Ita, <clears throat> bring them in, and just be like, "Do we ask him about the conspiracy and say what's been going on, or do we just walk away and go, this has been enough of a win?" I believe the more ammunition. He has the better, hmm. the more information, especially if he has a network to spread that information. It may be helpful to us. Hmm? Yes. Rita? Uh, I find it highly unlikely that he can provide more information. In some ways, we seem to know much more than he does. Uh, however, to be honest, I'm curious as to why he just hasn't stolen the president's papers. It would be so much easier than this campaign and trying to win the president's. It baffles me. But right. that is that is for another time. So we can ask him why he hasn't stolen it, because that's good to know. Because if the reason is like he feels bad, then perhaps we can steal the papers. Uh, and we could give the rumor that the Empire of Numbers is coming to take over and they want Jaden to be president so they can win easily. How do we feel about that rumor? I uh, I do not oppose uh, having that spread. Since Excellent, you were the only true. one who I think would have a problem with that. All right, so sorry about that, friend. Now we can have this quick conversation. Um, um, Alex, he explains that the when you ask about the, president, the president's papers, he means like access to the president's archives, information, the president, like it's not like there's a bundle it's like the the letters that have been passed on, but it's it, it's. Then why did he say papers? That is a that is a ridiculous name for it. 
All right, so we've got another rumor for you. Don't worry about her. She kind of just keeps talking. Um, uh, and then he'll lay out the rumor about the Empire of Numbers. And, he, and I think we could throw it out there that, like, Jeanette Wilcox disappeared as part of it. We couldn't find her. I don't know if anyone can. Sorry. There's who? these breaches going on. It goes all the way to the Ministry of Trade. Interesting. Well, I'll tell Deprot all of this, and he'll make sure it gets around. Wonderful. I'm going to go dress up as the Necrotess and host a wedding. <laughs> Just another Manic Monday. This is why I became a Dawnbreaker. <laughs> um, says, loathing himself. And with that, you uh, you leave um, uh, poor Richard Cambridge, the Grey, uh, to finish his uh, drinks alone and uh, reminisce about his life up top. Uh, and uh, you head back to the rooms. Um, by now, you're all exhausted. This is this has been a, a, a hell of a day. Um, so uh, you you turn in for the night. Is there anything uh, you guys would like to do uh, before you um, sleep? Um, I think Maka would want to discuss with Duncan this wedding. Um, Duncan has a has secured a position in the wedding for himself um maka would ask um should Ita and myself go to this ceremony as well yes i'll see that you're both invited we will go as guests yes no yes. cover no lies i am afraid i may misspeak. All right. However, the Ministry of Trade is likely to be there and recognize you as Ginkgo Greenleaf. Hmm. I Perhaps did. Ita can help you with this performance. How would I help? <laughs> He's a terrible liar and he yes. might need help lying and helping him get around questions or, you know, what they would call road bumps, you know, from caravans, things that would cause problems you need to avoid. You might be able to help him deftly avoid those things. I do not know if I am up to the task, but I believe we have no other option. That's correct. I'm glad we agree on the situation. So here's the other thing. I do have a mission for you, Maka, because you know the princess best. I've got to be sneaking around behind the scenes, and I will just stab Karen in the neck and drag her out a window if I can. But if I can't, it turns out one of the biggest weaknesses of Jaden Hayworth is the fact that people don't like Karen. What a twist. So, either as yourself, as Ginkgo Greenleaf, whoever you need to be, I just need you to do everything you can to make care and be as apparently annoying as she is i'm mm. gonna do my best to make things go wrong that we don't make her freak out i just need you if there's a chance to maybe give a toast to just really say something that's gonna make her flip her lid you know just drive her up the wall make her really angry can you think on that tonight yes yes i will think of things to say to karen to upset her yes Excellent. And it'll mean a lot coming from you because you're her bestie. We are besties, yes. Great. I need you to weaponize that. Mm. Tomorrow, you're going to break that, you know, over your knee. Ita, good luck. <laughs> and with that... Will I continue being you? <clears throat> I mean, that would probably be advisable on the scale of things. Okay, then... Uh, all right. Then I'm going to need you to talk for a little bit so I can uh, try to uh, learn your accent by tomorrow. All right. So, I can I can give you like two hours. Then I'm going to have perfect. to sleep at least five. And during that time, I am sorry, but I'm going to have to re sew your outfit into something that looks more wedding appropriate. Please do not remove uh, the stitching. That, please. What? Please do not remove the stitching. But how am I supposed to re sew it if I can't take no, any no, of the no, stitching? No, no, no. The stitching out? on the edges is for, uh, the decorative stitching. Can I cover it? Yes. 
Yeah, anything I do will be re- reparable later. I'm not like, and then I'll burn it in the fire. Also, we don't have a fire. We have three rocks and then rock ground and then rock door. We'll, we'll take the extra bits and we'll put them in, in my pack so they'll be with you as needed. Uh, so yeah, he'll he'll cover that up and try to make it look as butlerish as possible. <laughs> uh, and he'll he'll keep, he'll, he's trying to find some way to make a cape of his own so that he can hide his like rapier under that behind him rather than have to walk around as like an armed butler. Um, cool. All right. Fair enough. So, um, as, uh, the, uh, the, the night progresses, uh, Duncan, you absentmindedly chatter likely about the history of the Dawnbreakers at Ita, who doesn't actually track any of the content, but is purely listening, um, for the accent. Yeah. I feel uh, like after an hour of that, she's like, I won't use any of these phrases and gives me some of her reports to read aloud for her so she can hear her own yeah. sentences. Uh, yep, yeah. and you using um, the random sprung Breck gear you've got, um, you kind of sprung Breck Butler up the uh, the outfit. Uh, Maka, I assume you're going to sleep. Maka went to sleep uh, when they were talking about accents. Amazing. So uh, <laughs> with a happily snoring turtle, uh, the two of you work late into the night uh, before finally passing out yourselves into oblivion. Oblivion, like what Gwen still continues to sink into. This episode of Curse Code and Crown Sound was mixed and edited by Laura Hamstra, and the campaign was created by Tom McGee. Our original theme music was composed by Landon Noblock, and Curse Code and Crown's logo was created by the brilliant Decapitated Markers. If you want to follow our players or our DM on Twitter, you can reach out to Laura at EL Hamstring, Ryan at the Ryan LeBlanc, Tyler at Tyler underscore Hewitt, Tom McGee at McGee TD, or you can message our whole company at Dum Dum Dice. So please join us again for more Curse Code and Crown! Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half-Blind Prophet, James Quayar, Charles Grams, Christopher Little, Sue One, George Dolby, One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield, Lord Abradovic, Noel Lewis, Scott Garland, Anthony Griffin, Chet Awesome Laser, Jordan Neesmith, Benjamin V, Gavin and Abby McDonald, Taryn Hefner, Cade Peters, Richard Cranium, Christian Mendez, Anna Zed, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you.